All right. Hey, slackers. I just wanted to uh, uh, show people a little bit of, that may not be familiar um, with the Trading View program. Uh, just some interesting little things. So uh, there is a social media function within Trading View that allows you to create a profile, allows you to create, you know, in this blue uh, tab here, ideas that you can publish. So like as a group, we could journal our learning progress and things that we do together. Um, you can see, you know, who's following who, nobody's following me right now. There's no reason to, I'm not publishing anything. Um, but I am following two people, uh, one of which, and I'm in their discord is new wave traders. Um, and I'll show you what that profile kind of looks like in a minute. Um, but you'll see also here on the right, the other thing trading view allows you to do is track and color code multiple different cryptocurrencies and stocks and funds, indexes, gold, um, you know, NASDAQ, Dow Jones, Russell, uh, the dollar, gold, silver, potcoin, um, Uniswap, you know, polka dot. American Airlines. Um, and so, you know, this is what the published, you know, ideas look like. You know, it's basically a blog platform, right? So it allows you to create a blog, add images or video. You know, you can thumbs up and like things and comment on them. And you can follow ideas. Um, and this is what that looks like, you know, so basically this person says, you know, there's a potential here coming up depending. Now, of course, we broke over 30,000 since this was published and have hit almost 40,000. Um, so this applies to 30,000 and 40,000 because we could potentially come up to 40,000 and have this same pattern uh, come down over the course of the, this following year. And of course, this looks like a lot, but even if it goes up to 40,000 and finds a new base at 20,000, you know, then that's when it bounces up and goes back up here to 80,000. Um, so this is kind of how you study the technicals of price action for a given asset. And traditional markets, you have fundamentals also. So you have things like, you know, is the stock that you're investing in or the equity, does it produce, you know, does that business provide dividends, you know, or uh, is it actually, does it have a revenue um, over time? And so I used my uh, Brave browser and my pre-search. Isn't this a nice, pretty search screen with hardly any advertisements and I'm earning in the top right corner cryptocurrency while doing these searches and of course if I don't like or find the information that I'm looking for I can always switch easily over to Google DuckDuckGo um, and some other websites uh, for different search engines but so when you're looking at fundamentals for Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, a different folks got together and they create, uh, they basically analyze the on-chain data for whatever blockchain or project um, is on the blockchain. So with Bitcoin, this graph shows a fundamental and what this shows is it color codes how uh, different wallets, how long Bitcoin has been in those wallets. So at the bottom here in the dark red colors are all wallets that have held Bitcoin for a month or less. You have to get into the yellow uh, before in the middle until you see the wallets that have held Bitcoin for six months or three months to a year. <clears throat> and then of course, 
the dark purple all the way on the top right are the wallets that have held Bitcoin for more than 10 years. And Bitcoin is just had its, I believe, 12th birthday in the beginning of January. So that's very small, but what you can see, what the trend is long term is that over time, these hot colors, these wallets, the amount of wallets that are holding Bitcoin for short periods of time are getting less and less as the price, this line of Bitcoin increases. So the, the, the better Bitcoin is at storing value, the longer people hold it in their wallets, there's a finite supply. So the more people wanting Bitcoin and holding Bitcoin pushes the price up. And, and that's reflected in this very macro tr fundamental trend. And with Glassnode, it is uh, integrated into TradingView. Um, but let's talk about some trading view a little bit and about how these chart works charts work and I want to start out by showing Bitcoin versus the US dollar in a monthly time frame and I'm gonna show with these candlesticks in the top of the frame the Bitcoin price as it moves up and down from month to month. And in the bottom frame is RSI, which shows the strength of the movement of Bitcoin. And of course, in general, you can see that Bitcoin goes up, and this is on a logarithmic scale, um, but that Bitcoin does have significant pullbacks. Um, from here to here was an 85% pullback, but then from that point up to the next thousand days later, you had a 12,000% increase over uh, three years. And then you have another pullback over the course of a little over a year of 80%. And, you know, now we're on another run. And so far we've gone 900% since the COVID lows, the COVID dump um, in March. And this is over the course of the last, it'll be year this March. So we're not even at a year yet, and it's gone up 1,000%. So what we can see in this RSI is that it looks very similar to the chart above it. But you'll notice in these peaks, um, what we're looking for is for this chart at the bottom to not quite look like the chart at the top. So you can see up at the top from the high point to the high point, from the low point to the low point, price is moving up. Now from the top of these points, prices, these points are actually moving down just slightly as price moves up. And that shows that the strength of this uptrend is decreasing. And so you're likely to see some kind of fall in price soon. And then that's what you see over the course of a year and a half after, you know, we get really close and break, after breaking all time new highs, we finally come back down 80%. And then down here at the bottom, Likewise, we have higher lows, and here at the bottom, we actually have lower lows, so that's hidden bullish divergence. And now you can see these two charts are agreeing with each other, and the price is moving up while these points are moving up, 
we're waiting for Bitcoin to come down and put another low so that we can see if these lows are showing any sign of divergence. If they're not showing signs of divergence, then overall on a month to month basis and a year to year basis, Bitcoin is going to be moving up until this divergence shows again. It has a potential to show, yeah, and we don't have, so, so the fear until just recently was that from this high to th this high, these new highs, that we were going to see divergence. Well, I guess we still can on the monthly from here to up here. So we actually want to see this RSI come all the way up here. I think on a yearly time frame. Hmm. No, so that's we're watching these highs. We're watching these lows. I might edit out this just last couple minutes. Anyways, so this is basically Bitcoin um, long term trend. Then, of course, we can go down to the weekly and start looking in greater detail on this trend. We see a lot more up and down from the week to week, but we see some some overall patterns. The overall pattern is that we're still riding this support, this blue line here. And for a while, until just recently, um, until about, about, you know, like in October, September and October, we were basically finding resistance at this level. And when Bitcoin on July 20th broke above this orange line, then came down and tested it, folks pretty much knew it's going up. It found new support at a line that found resistance. And now, if you go way, since we're in new territory, um, we've essentially just been watching Bitcoin going up and we're wondering, you know, what what do we know about you know the new spot that bitcoin is at and we can actually measure here do, do, do. and we can actually expect some things we can expect bitcoin to test and come down almost 40 percent so when you have a correction you know this top white line is about a 25 percent correction this line is about a 40 percent correction um you know even a 50 percent correction would be healthy and just allow bitcoin more room to go to the upside. Um, now, this isn't the only way to draw this. You can instead take it from, you know, the breakout. You can say right here. This 6.8 bottom white line is what we like to call the golden zone. And so the farther down it goes, 
on this correction, again, we could expect, you know, um, let's see, so that was a, a set, almost a 700% run. We could expect it to correct down 80% and not be worried. Okay, this would just be a really good buying opportunity. Okay. Bam. So, you know, and, and usually, so again, we're on the weekly time scale. Usually if we see like an 80% correction, that's over like three months to, you know, 16 weeks, um, you know, two to four months usually. And, and we've only had one month here. Um, so, you know, the question was, you know, should I buy a Bitcoin right now? We might want to look at the smaller time frames. And if we go down to a daily, we see some cool things. Now, you want to keep in mind that essentially through this correction, if we're going to assume it's a, a three month correction or four month correct correction, we want to be able to buy Bitcoin at low risk areas of entry where we can accumulate, you know, Bitcoin at a discount and throughout the correction dollar cost average and in, into a pretty good price, you know, cause that's what we want. We want a lower price as low as we can get. So, and we know it can go anywhere back down to 20,000 and still not really like freak people out. Now it probably will not stay very long down there around 20,000, but it is possible. So what we're actually trying to do, let's see, if we look at what it's been, Bitcoin's been doing over the last couple of weeks, it's basically been coming, riding down in what's called kind of a parallel channel and, you know, just kind of bouncing up and down. Let's see if we can get rid of that too. These are smaller time frames. Um, and what we can expect is that it's going to hold this pattern until it doesn't. And for Bitcoin to break this pattern, it essentially has to move outside this channel or move up and start breaking these um, previous highs. As long as Bitcoin is making lower highs, lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, it's in a correction. Okay. And what we want to do is, you know, if we say this correction is going to happen over the next month, you know, uh, you know, it, it could even go up and test up here again, come back down here, test here, and then boom, you know, test these again before coming up, you know, or, and it could do this multiple, you know, as long as it wants to, but it could, it's going to go on for a certain amount of time. What we want to be able to do is purchase Bitcoin 
at these low risk levels where we kind of know price will want to go. And let's see if I can, whoops. Let's just do that. There we go. Boom. So we got this breakout up to here. I'll measure that earlier. Sorry. Down. Down. Bam. There we go. That looks about right. So we would look for, you know, Bitcoin to potentially. play play around here and make this pattern hypothetically that's just what I'm trying to keep my eye on and but now that I actually have targets down here I can put in buys at 29,700, 26,054, uh, and I would make sure to save money so that I start buying small amounts as it goes down, and I can increase my amounts as it goes down. And as soon as it starts making higher highs, should be you know right here and lower highs you know that type of pattern then I should be able to look on my RSI and, and some other indicators and confirm okay I can now see where the RSI has, whoa, is now in line with the ups and downs of the price action and the strength of Bitcoin is moving, going up and boom, boom, boom. And then of course the RSI goes up and down as that happens as well. So that's Bitcoin. And that's my basic rundown on Bitcoin. We can go to the hourly chart and this is a much smaller time frame. Let's go to the the six hour because that's what this is really based off of. So this is since the last little pullback in in December to the most recent high, you know, Bitcoin's pulled back to about the fifty percent, and so. These are where I've had my buys, and my next buy is in the 27,000s, and then the next one is in the 24,000s. And you can see here on the daily,
you know. A more appropriate use of the the pitchfork and the the larger pattern of Bitcoin moving up, and it would be a very very strong move for Bitcoin to move sideways, test, you know, basically move up and down, move sideways, hit this red line, and go up to here, right? Bam at the 3.618 before it does another pullback um, you know back down into the 60s you know this is how targets get to be like 140,000 with Bitcoin over the course of the next year but it could quite easily be a $5,000 Bitcoin although if you look at the fundamentals and you look at mainly the supply of Bitcoin and how it's disappearing, um, you know, the probability of seeing 140,000 is a lot more likely than seeing 50,000. But a 50% pullback to 80% pullback on Bitcoin at any time is not outside the ordinary. Now, relative to Ethereum, um, Ethereum and Bitcoin. Again, so Ethereum's only been around for a few years, and most cryptos do not do well against Bitcoin because Bitcoin's, you know, is store of value. It's got a finite supply, um, but you can see that Ethereum. While it's it's had its ups and downs, is now at the point where it is creating higher highs. It's actually creating. Let's see. Boom, lower lows, and it's creating higher highs. That's kind of the exciting thing about ethereum right now and you can see that you know when this is the next big thing for ethereum and you know this is essentially boom. what we can see happen. So again, we can measure with our charting tools. Oops. Let me grab the right one here. And do, 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 swing low to swing high. And we can see that this comes right to the 168 right here and uh, a much sooner target is this 0 0.07 and it's currently at 0 0.04 so this would be at almost 2x for Bitcoin to hit this line and again we should see in RSI the lower lows going up that is bullish um especially if we also see the higher highs and now if we go to ethereum bitcoin on the you know smaller scale i'll, I'll show you how i kind of did this so you know I did a bunch of these things <laughs> the fib extensions and essentially 
I bought down here. Where the heck? Why the heck? Well, you know, my risk is like right there. Actually, it's much higher. Yeah, I come down here. And, you know, we had targets on the other chart around 0.7 which would be like a 240% return um, with a risk reward ratio of eight to one. And, you know, I have these small targets. That one's probably too low. Here. And Boom. That's so annoying. Boom. So I'll have X amount that I will that I had bought at this 0 0.02276 Bitcoin, I bought, uh, actually I bought one Ethereum at 0 0.03189. And, you know, I set targets to sell at 0 0.04060 and 0 0.05. But I'll probably adjust that to 0 0.05 and 0 0.07. Um, Now, Ethereum USD, right, this is, you know, because the question is, should you just have, you know, when you're, you're buying Ethereum with USD, what you see here, too, is against the U.S. dollar, we have uh, a high that we're essentially breaking, and we have higher lows um which is good because historically we've been um having lower highs <laughs> and the higher <laughs> and lower uh and moving down uh correcting right um so what we want to see is a similar thing here on IS RSI where over the course of the year, uh, this RSI comes up and is just any any little bit higher than the previous high on RSI, and that will create bullish momentum to the upside. If RSI ends up not being so high, now it'll it can come down and psh, do that quite easily, you know, and, and play around right here. But, and it doesn't even have to come up that high. It just got to come up a little bit higher. And then this can start coming down. And, you know, essentially we would want to see the price here move up higher, you know, again, this is $4,000, you know, it doesn't have to be $4,000, but boom. You know, we would see and expect Ethereum to come to these, you know, essentially the bots and the algos would Let's see, even coming to the 168 here, puts us higher, come back down to the 101.
let's not get greedy. Let's just let's say let's not get greedy. Four thousand dollar Ethereum, before, you know, and then it it could make it'll make another big correction, right? And then this process will start all over again, except the overall trend will be up, 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 and Ethereum. is having a huge update um and yeah it's worth reading about and learning how it works and uh learning why uh it's getting the big <laughs> the big upgrade that it is all right, I think this is long enough. I feel like I'm rambling. Hope this was useful to somebody. Um, feel free to uh, get more information at ethereum.org and join my Telegram group and ask me any questions that you'd like. Thank you.